Hey, good evening, traders. Good evening. Raul here. Sorry, no webcam today. Um, like I'm had to unplug it and it's off to the side. So uh, we're just gonna run today's without my uh, webcam. I hope that's okay. I'm sure it is. And uh, we'll get started here on our main topic of discussion, which will be the Elliott Wave uh, software suite. And uh, just to get a little chit chat going, how's, how's everybody's week going so far? Everybody having a good week, decent week, bad week? <clears throat> Doing okay. That's it's not bad. The market's gotten confusing now, and uh, we're we're in a range bound, uh, definitely range bound. Um, you know, uh, let me get my little drawing tool here. But we've uh, we've been sideways, obviously within a range. That's what being range bound means. Now, what is this? Like, I mean, I'm, I'm getting this uh, weird situation, maybe, where, like, windows have this skeletal movement around them, and then they move. I don't know. I think my, I think my wife's been messing around with my computer here. Anyways, um, take a look here at the, at the NASDAQ futures. We've been... Uh, in a pretty fair range, uh, 6,800, 6,600, let's call it the low, 8,000 at the high. Um, so pretty large range, uh, and the next move probably uh, has the potential to spark um, the next uh, either rally or, or sell-off, I think, um, until the COVID situation's not over. I don't think uh, there's, there's, you know, we're, we're gonna have one strong direction to the upside. Um, just based on news, we keep hearing things like, oh, the economy's gonna roar right back. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's gonna be that fast. You know, businesses are, you know, will have lost a lot of investor, um, a lot of investors money, number one, due to the sell off. Number two, just uh, the fundamentals are going to not be that great, right? Um, I'm pretty sure quarterly earnings are going to be horrible for the rest of the year, potentially going into next year as well. And, uh, you know, just because we've self quarantined for two weeks, doesn't mean we could just go back out into the world. Um, it's, you know, this whole two week thing, I, you know, it, it has to be longer than that. At least I think, I mean, you know, the, the U S won't be cured in two weeks time. Um, but I, I believe that's not really the reason it's just to flatten the curve. So hospitals can, um, you know, service patients. Because right now it's it's pretty bad. People getting turned away for not having enough symptoms or no symptoms at all, um, or small fevers. You know, something not as serious as somebody who's high fever, chills, all sorts of symptoms of coronavirus, COVID nineteen. But Markets are telling us uh, we're definitely in a holding pattern. Um, you know, the, the next big news to come out, it's going to be the next driver. But I don't think we consolidate forever. If things don't get better, you know, within the next month, by the end of April, um, you know, my opinion is we're, you know, we're going to start retesting some of these lows. Um, and then potentially definitely trade lower. All right. So that's just my two little cents on what I think uh, about the world right now and, and the markets. So today we're going to talk about Elliott Wave. Uh, definitely my, my favorite tool to trade with, um, more specifically for, for swing trading. Um, 
uh, and, and more specifically on top of that in the stock market, but it works great for futures, Forex and stocks. Um, multiple time frames, we can find a trade um, as long as we follow the rules, right? The rules and observations of the Elliott Wave system. So just to kind of reiterate, if we're in a bullish pattern, it's going to look something like this. Where we have the beginning, right? Just Let's just call it X. And then we have wave number one, a pullback, number two. Another push to the upside, a, a much bigger one. We'll call that wave three. Here's wave four, and the reason we're called trade the fifth is because of this situation here. We like to trade the pullback on the fourth wave, um, looking for that high probability situation that'll get us to that fifth wave, right? This would be bullish. If I'm looking at this in a bearish sense, we got one, two, three, here's four, and then five. So we call this X. This would be one, two, three, four, and five. Okay. So these, this is the, the pattern we're looking for. Okay. And it's going to be tough to find when you have markets trading like this. Right, we need a trending situation. This is a trending indicator. Okay, we want that confirmation that the market's making higher highs and higher lows, and obviously, in, in a type of structure that follows this one, two, three, four, five uh, pattern. That's as simple as that can get. Okay, now there's something special that happens between um, wave three and four, which would be the pullback, um, the, the Elliott oscillator, right? Measuring the strength or lack of strength of, that, of the pullback from the third wave down to the fourth, right? So from the high of the third down to the low of the fourth, how strong uh, is that pullback or retracement, okay? Uh, and we use the Elliott Wave Oscillator, which would be this bad boy right here, Elliott Wave Oscillator, okay? It's a histogram form. That'll tell us um, how steep or not steep the pullback is, right? Kind of like measuring the strength of that pullback. And if we happen to fall within a specific range, um, we're okay to take the trade. If we are not within that range, then we want to ignore this one, two, three, four, five pattern altogether because we don't have that high probability trade set up. Okay. The one, two, three, four, five pattern, um, will probably remain on the chart, but without that proper pullback, we just don't have a trade that we can feel confident with. And then lastly, um, we take a look at the stochastic um, crossover here, or the false breakout stochastic indicator, which will tell us, you know, um, number one, when we have a bullish and bearish crossover in the stochastics, um, overbought, oversold conditions. And it'll also uh, warn us when we have a false breakout. Okay. Um, so Trevor, um, the reason I'm, I'm not today is I don't, I don't have the camera set up. And I literally, just made it home um, just in time for the webinar here. So that's uh, 
that's why I don't I don't have the uh, the camera set up here today. Anyways, um, the false stochastic indicator will tell us when we have a false breakout um, through these yellow lines uh, above and below. Okay. So the first thing we want to look for is a trending pattern. Okay. Usually uh, when we are in a situation like this, where we're just kind of range bound, we're not going to find too many nice looking trends. Yeah, we can say that from this point to this point, we had an uptrend. And from this point to this point, we had a downtrend. But, you know, the overall picture is, you know, depending on the time frame that you're looking at is sideways. You know, we can't ignore the, you know, how obvious all of that looks. So first things first, um, locate the trend. Now the indicator will do most of this for you, but I, I just want to break it down step by step so we can take a look at charts uh, for the rest of the time. Okay, locate the trend. Um, after that, whether bullish or bearish, um, find the Elliott pattern. So the one, two, three, four, five, or basically the one, two, three, four, because we we're interested in that fourth wave pullback. Elliott wave oscillator. So, and we want it to be between 90% to 140%. Let's move this right here. So 90% to 140% from the high low pivot of wave three. And then lastly, um, false breakout uh, stochastic. And um, locate your entry. Okay, so these are kind of like the step by steps we're gonna we're gonna go through. Okay, so I already got our, our first request here to take a look at SQ and X-ray. So let's start looking at some charts. We want SQ square payments company. And uh, we, we certainly have a, a trend here. It's definitely going lower. Also, um, here's a high, a low compared to this high, we have a lower high compared to this low. We certainly have made lower ho lower lows and lower highs. Um, that finally changed uh, right around here, where we're making some higher highs relative to, from these lows. But at the same time, we want to look at the overall picture, and the overall picture is saying, if this is a high, this is a much lower high. Okay. So um, next thing we want to do is uh, just find where to isolate, right? Where are we going to begin our, our pattern, right? To the trained eye, um, you know, we can see many different variations here where one, two consists there. There's your third. This would be your fourth wave right here pulling back. Um, one of the things I, I've been kind of preaching about since I've been running these webinars is to use uh, the Elliott Wave Oscillator as a guide to kind of 
show you where that third wave is because that, that third wave, so this would be wave two right here, the high, this would be the low of the third wave. So from two to three, this is the third wave. So trick I've, I've been telling you guys about is to look at the Elia wave oscillator. And when we have a, a very long, expansive um, histogram in one direction or in one color, we're pretty likely in a third wave at that point. For example, right here, we also had a pretty large green expansion. More than likely, somewhere in here, we're, we're in the third wave. So if we could just kind of reverse engineer ourselves. So if this is the third wave, uh, you know, wave two could be here and then wave one. So now we've kind of created that one, two, uh, sorry, one, two, and then this kind of as a third. So using the Elliott wave oscillator kind of to, to help uh, in that sense. So, Look at the Elliott wave oscillator here. We have a whole lot of red with a big push to the downside. This is an obvious wave three, which is telling me that wave one um, or two is, is somewhere around here. Typically on a downtrend, I like to look for the, the highest high possible or at least one of the highs and begin my isolation from there. So this is square on the 60 minute. We'll take a look at it in um, on other time frames. But here we have uh, our highest high. This is around Valentine's Day. Actually, not even close. Uh, just over between the 14th and the 21st of February. Um, and we got one, two, not the right isolation. So let's pick at the next high here. And here we got something. So we're looking at February 27th, the high of February 27th. Let's pull it up on think or swim here just to get a bar number. So I'm looking at, uh, on a daily chart, how many, how many years back? I'm looking at five years back. So let's pull up square. And sorry, that's the daily. Um, on a one hour chart, which is what we're looking at, I'm looking at 90 days back. And uh, we chose to isolate here, which is bar number Um, 458 bar number 458. So if I go to the settings, I know on Ninja Trader is, is super simple. It's just click and refresh. On uh, most of the other platforms, uh, you got to do a little bit of work here. Hang on, like two Elliott waves. Whoops. All right, so the starting bar is currently uh, bar number two. So nothing wrong with that. And as you can see, it's, you know, we, we, we did get that pullback uh, into, I know, uh, I didn't. let me fix this real quick. There we go. We do have that pullback into uh, the pullback zone. But that's from a starting bar of two. And actually, this isolation begins right up here. There's your one, two, but on Ninja Trader, we have it picked right here. That's where I picked it. So this is bar number 458. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to 458. Okay, so now the start bar is not just two, it's 458. So I'll click OK and apply. And it begins um, the wave sequence from that high or that bar number 458. So we got the same looking chart here. All right. So let me go back here. So this looks good. Um, 
decent setup. I like it. Uh, the only problem I guess I could find with it is that um, the Elliott oscillator just a little bit too aggressive, but it's starting to roll over and we're still within the, um, we're still here within the, the pullback zone, right? So we've got our pattern. This is one, two, three, and here's four. Now on a one hour chart, I guess uh, this trade is a little bit too late to it. The entry probably look, um, you do have a false breakout stochastic. That's another warning sign here that, uh, you know, this got a little bit overheated to the upside, but it, it is rolling over. So it's, it's interesting. I do like it. Based on the rules, we should probably ignore it. Uh, at least on the 60 minute, we'll take a look at other time frames. But it's got the setup. Um, and if we measure, we want to measure that uh, the lowest point in the third wave, which is right here. So from zero, Fibonacci uh, retracement. And we clearly, here's the 90 to 140%, clearly. It's just blown right through that. Let's uh, let's increase the time frame here. And let's re isolate at that high. So even on the higher time frame on the daily, it's, it, you know, on the structure of the one, two, three, four, uh, you know, the Elliott wave structure, one, two, three, four, five, it's, it's still there, right? We got one, two, three, here's the fourth potential fifth wave target is going to be right here. But um, on the oscillator on the daily, it just didn't pull back enough. Um, let's, let's just keep finding that happy medium. Maybe there's a, a time frame where it does set up uh, nicely. So let's do like a 240 minute. Okay. Gonna have to do it this way then. 240, 21. So 60, let's do 120 for a two hour time frame. Um, I need more, more time here, not just 21 days. 90 and still a pretty violent move. Uh, let's go back to that 240. And on the 240, this is where we have the trade. So strange, <laughs> we had to kind of flip flop 10 different times here, but, um, on the 240 minute in square, this looks like the perfect setup. Okay, we're, we're not trapped in a false breakout stochastic, number three. Number one would be we got the pattern, one, two, three, four. Uh, the entry would be, uh, would certainly have been right in here. A little earlier would have gotten you in right here. Um, just because of the, the switch and the breakout stochastic happened right there, which was right in between some of these bars. Um, but the cross below the moving average high and moving at average low happened right here. But, and not only that, but we, we took out this, this low right here, this higher low all happening uh, within the past uh, few days here. So we got the pattern. Look at the pullback. We're certainly within 90 to 140%. So that's what we look for. And, um, and we don't have uh, any red flags on the false breakout stochastic. So this is definitely a nice trade. Uh, I would anticipate that we could continue moving to the downside. 
we take out that low, that that fifth wave target is almost guaranteed um, because it's gonna it's gonna find a new wave of momentum to the downside. Uh, try to locate a new low, um, and just by the law of numbers, uh, twenty would probably be the next fitting target here. But look at where we are now, forty five. So it's it's certainly going to have to be coronavirus driven in my opinion but uh you know a short around here to try to retest these lows i don't think it's out of the question okay so pretty decent trade here in square does anybody have a question about this trade and the setup Yeah, typically we, we don't want to see that yellow. At first, it, it's pretty lagging, right? It's um, here's here's what I mean. I'm gonna draw it out. So we got the blue and red line, right? So let's say we got something like this, okay? And then the red line, okay? So blue crosses above red is bullish. Blue crosses below red is bearish right that's kind of the color code that we have here um so let's say we have something like this okay just for starters um We have, uh, let's do like an oversold right here, overbought right up here. Okay, so this is what it looks like. So right down here, when we have that cross above the red, it's bullish, right? So we got that cross and the oscillator continued moving uh, above that over, uh, oversold area. So it's not going to highlight that in yellow, but when it, when this situation here happens multiple times, I believe it's three times under the oversold or above the overbought, we're going to get that to appear. So we might get faked out between uh, those three instances of the false breakout stochastic but overall it's gonna paint the picture um that you know we, we have uh something going on in this particular market that's forcing the oscillator to remain lower and that's obviously uh price momentum pushing lower and lower and lower continuously makes sense now the other thing that makes a trade valid would be the risk to reward. Um, so based on the rules and observations, we ideally want a one to 1 1.6 uh, risk to reward ratio with this being the risk, this being the reward. Okay, we wanna make at least one point, so 0. 0.6 greater than what we're trying to uh, risk on a trade. And the way we set that up is, again, just using the pivot points on the pattern. So fourth wave to our entry, that's going to be the 100% or that one. Let's say our entry is right exactly where it closed at 45.86. Okay, so that's this is how much I'm risking. From 45.86... up to 59.40, okay? That's the risk. Little over, um, how much is that? About 14 points, give or take, 14 points. So our reward should be at least 0.6 times greater than 14 points. So we could use a Fibonacci retracement or we could use a Fibonacci extension tool 
and I have a, uh, the extension tool already set up so that um, we can measure that properly. And uh, it would be smart for, for all of you to uh, set up your tools, your drawing tools in a way where, hey, here, you know, number one, to figure out the 90 to 140%, and then number two, to figure out uh, your risk versus reward. So from the top of wave four, because that would be kind of where we want to stop our, ourselves out to our entry, let's call it the uh, right where it closed, 4586. I'm just gonna move this to the right a little bit. So this definitely achieves the 1.6 uh, risk to reward ratio, right? Just uh, multiply everything by 100 so you can you know, move the zeros, uh, but here's the entry, correct? Here's, uh, sorry, I, I meant to say kind of, I guess divide by three, the opposite, move the decimal point to the left twice. Here's your 1.0, your zero or your entry. Here's your 1.0 again. So at this point, at the 100% line, you're at one to one. At 160% or move the decimal point twice to the left, you're at 1.6 and that falls right in line to where um, the fifth wave target is, which is a target of 2426 from an entry of 4568. It's pretty bold. It's certainly pretty bold, but the mindset um, in recent times when it comes to investing has changed and anybody who bought this and it's now facing losses, especially as we take out the lows, um, they're gonna wanna get rid of their positions, try to reload at a later point. It's just psychology. So the possibilities here, this is a, a great trade setup. Really great trade setup. Um, I wouldn't wait for it to turn red. I mean, it did today, actually. Um, I just zoom in some. Uh, certainly turned red today. You can see the flag here on the right shows the most recent value, which is negative uh, 0.238. You could kind of see a little red dot right there. So it definitely rolled over and changed value. Um, the other thing you could do, and this would be up for debate, kind of gets a little subjective here. Let me modify that Elliott Wave Oscillator, hang on. This is kind of, let's change the width here, double what it is now, whoop. Change it to double what it is now, just so we could get a decent context, there we go. The other thing you could do is kind of um, look for that rollover point. See here, this, uh, hang on, let me, let me use uh, something easier here. So this green bar right there, okay, compared to this one, this uh, bar in front of that first one is higher. This one is higher, this one is higher, this one is higher. Suddenly we get a bar that is lower. So now you're, you're starting to experience some kind of rollover. You don't know if the next one is gonna be higher than this one, but we, we've reached a point where, I mean, you can see the close of every one of these bars is higher than the previous. So we've reached a point from the lowest here to there where things are starting to slow down, at least on the LA oscillator. So you can wait for that rollover for it to turn red or wait for that rollover to be a little bit more aggressive in front of the, in front of that, uh, in front of that trade. But the idea is um, if we can get into the trade, uh, I don't know what happened here. There we go. 
if we can get in front of the trade, excuse me, if we can get the trade within that 90 to 140, that's all I care about. Okay. We are within that 90 to 140. So I, I certainly want to um, take a short trade around somewhere in here. But how we go on to that entry uh, gets a little subjective, right? We have, if we look at the indicator settings here uh, for the Elliott Wave, we clearly have uh, something called the buy line and the sell line, okay, in blue and red, and that would be this right here, just kind of see it stepping lower and lower and lower. So that's a, a moving average high and a moving average low. So it's the moving at it's a moving average um, of I forget how many bars back, but X amount of bars, but we're not looking at the average of the close. Because then it would be exactly the same. We're looking at the moving average high and the moving average low. That's why you have a little bit of separation between the, that buy line and sell line. So another way to get in, cross below that sell line. If you wanna get long, that cross above that buy line, get in. Make sense? So that's one way to do it. The other way to do it is, you know, locate a pivot in recent price action. So for example, you know, we had this huge run up and then here it kind of failed. Couldn't take out this high, which would have forced price potentially to go lower, but this low we started taking out and it was happening within the 90 to 140 on the Elliott wave oscillator. Okay. And unless you're using this indicator on tick charts, uh, you have plenty of time to, to do this little bit of research with the three tools, okay? And also look at just price action to, to see where uh, a low pivot can get taken out. So none of this is happening fast. I mean, in this specific chart of Square stock, we're looking at a 240 minute. So this is certainly a swing trade. Definitely not a day trade. We can take a look at day trading um, time frames as well. But for this trade in Square, boom, the 240 minutes got it spot on. And a target of 24.26 is kind of where we're looking, where we're looking at. Now, X-ray was the next one. Dense Supply International Inc. Do they have anything to do with X-rays? <laughs> X-ray on the 240, I mean, it looks a lot like the chart of square. It looks a lot like the chart of square. We got first, second, third wave, big third wave, fourth wave pullback uh, into the zone, into the green area of the zone, which uh, gives us, I believe, it's an 85% chance that we're certainly going to uh, make that new fifth wave low. Again, this is the 240 minute chart. We could look at other time frames, but this looks, uh, especially delicious. So let's measure from the second wave to the third wave. The lowest point is obviously right down here on the oscillator. So we're gonna begin from uh, Fibonacci extension, uh, sorry, Fibonacci retracement from the zero line of the oscillator down to the lowest point. And we are obviously certainly within the 90 to 140%. Actually it looks like it's about to gamma ray its way down. I don't know. That's a dumb joke. Anyways, um, this looks really good. 
this one looks really, really good um, on the 240. Let's let's investigate some other time frames. Let's just pull up the 60 minute. The 60 minute looks good as well. Same situation, same sequence. Uh, that looks great on the 60 minute. Now, I want to say on the 60 minute, no, it doesn't look that great. Hang on, this is incorrect. Um, on the 60 minute, we certainly blew right past the 90 to 140%. And it happened right here as we enter the, um, the zone. I'm sure you can you can forgive a little bit of the expansion above the 140% here, but I mean, it, it got too, a little too far. It got a little too far. So on, on this time frame, it, it, this time frame probably doesn't make too much sense, uh, the 60 minute. Obviously any time frame lesser than this is gonna give us the same results. Um, just for kicks, looking at the five minute, uh, it, it gives us nothing. Um, that 240 minute though, I do like that 240 minute. Ooh, no, no, no. 90 days, 240 minutes. There we go. Yeah, 240 minute. Ooh, I love it. That 240 minute looks good. And uh, I mean, the entry is there. I mean, if, if, if this stock can open up tomorrow exactly where it closed today, um, it's it's a buy. Excuse me, it's a sell. This is a short opportunity. Now, we got everything going for us. We got the pattern. This is one, two, here's three, here's four. Okay, this is all indicator generated. We have the pull back on the oscillator within 90 to 140 percent. Okay, perfect. Uh, no false breakout stochastics. And it's it's got it had a few bearish crosses. You see that we had one, two. If we had had a third one, we would have started marking up these dots. But we didn't. Okay. And it's uh, going from over so uh, overbought uh, territory back down to kind of neutral, I guess, trading territory. So this one, this one is, is certainly nice. I do like this trade. Now, it certainly has very little risk uh, relative to where it closed to that fourth wave high. So with very little risk this certainly has way more potential than 1.6%. But because the risk is so small that there, there is, I mean, this is just me from my experience of trading. Um, there's certainly a slightly higher probability of retesting that fourth wave pivot high here. So let's just take a look. Let's draw this out. Okay, F9 gets me to the drawing I need. So the fourth wave high is at right at 40. The entry, let's call it, I mean, only because it crossed below that sell line. Let's call it right there, 37, 35, which is near where it uh, closed for the day. <coughs> Excuse me. And this, I mean, to make to get to that fifth wave target, um, it's gonna make three times your money. Okay, so this this is certainly the type of trade we want. Definitely greater than one point six um, reward to risk, but we're also only risking three points. I mean, uh, I would want to look at an average to range, I guess, to see, you know, how, how often do we really achieve three point swings from high to low? 
but uh and also maybe a, a little bit of fundamentals i don't know what the heck this company does thinkorswim has a really great um tab here analyze where we can search fundamentals so let's look at some x-ray okay so uh since 2015 so looking at a five-year period here um high of 67 low of 34 73 uh, seems like it's it's not loved by the street analysts um you know pretty much uh sell or hold dent supply manufacturer of professional dental products okay um <laughs> nobody's going to the dentist during this time um i think that's one of the reasons it could be selling i don't care about quarterly earnings or anything or revenues and any of this crap um but it's 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 not loved so it has potential to move lower um five-year low is 3463 and this is looking for a target on the fifth wave low or, or the fifth wave target again generated by the by the software here of 2942 um you know, if I'm short this, I'm taking target one at 33.12, which is the 1.6% or sorry, the 1.6 to one uh, reward to risk ratio minimum. And then letting some some ride for that for that uh, uh, one to three re, uh, risk to reward or, you know, 300% of what I'm willing to risk, which is you know, less than three points uh, on this trade. So X-ray looks really good. Um, again, you, you got to have an eye for it on the higher time frame. Let's take a look at it on the daily. So on the daily, I, once again, I mean, it's, it's sold off. It's pulled back into the zone. Unfortunately, on the oscillator, it got way out of hand on the on the sell-off where this retracement just barely made a dent and it's certainly not within zero to one forty percent. But of course we would need to redraw that. So let me just redraw it. From here to here. 90 would be at negative 1.5. Oscillators currently reading at negative six point six. Uh, certainly not anywhere near close. So X-ray, I mean, I guess the theme of today has been the 240 minute because that 240 minute um, has been looking pretty nice. A 240 minute is speaking volumes. I love this setup. It's got everything we're looking for. Sure, let's go on Thinkorswim and look at this one. Now this, uh, I would have to adjust the time here. Oh Jesus, uh, 240 minute comes out to what? Four hours? Somebody help me before I have to calculate this. So 240 minutes, 16, four hours. So let's take a look at the four hour, 90 days, applying okay. And we're gonna need to isolate. Um, we picked uh, this high up here. So this is bar number 118. Let's go to bar number 118 on a 90 minute. Bar number 118, sorry, on a 90 day chart, okay. Number 118 on a 90 day. Uh, did I pick the wrong spot? Probably would have to be this high here. So excuse me, number uh, bar number 80. Bar number 80. Must be a little bit of a data difference. But uh, here we go. Here's the setup. 
right? Might be a little bit of a data difference between, I mean, Thinkorswim and NinjaTrader, um, completely different data providers um, that could be affecting potentially, I don't know, but we got the setup here. We got the one, two, three, and four touched uh, the green zone uh, and we're looking for that same, pretty much that same target of 29, uh, 30, right? 29, 30, just to give it a nice number, 29, 30. Now, we got plenty of drawings here. We wanna use the Fibonacci retracement tool. So once I've clicked on the Fibonacci retracement tool, you'll notice that this little icon uh, for your active tool is kind of that little percent symbol. That's just what Thinkorswim decided to have it as. And what we wanna do, we wanna go from the zero line. Okay, so I'm gonna hover over the zero line all the way down to the lowest point on the third wave, which happens to be the lowest point also here. And we can see that this is certainly between 90 to 140%, just like we saw on NinjaTrader. Now, if your Fibonacci retracement looks, looks like, uh, looks like this, whoa, what happened there? Okay, if your Fibonacci retracement looks like this, where you got, you know, your, your 0, 23, 38, 50, 61, so on and so forth, if you right click on the, on the drawing that it produced and go to edit properties, you can uh, remove all of these uh, coefficients that you don't want to see. And you could also um, customize which ones you want to see. So we know we want it 90. So 0 0.9 and 140, 1.4. We want to change the color. We can change the color to anything you want, the style, the width, how thick you want it. Doesn't matter. These two colors are kind of the pretty, pretty much. The same. And then obviously we want it to be visible. Okay, we want those two to be visible. Everything else I don't care about. And then I'm gonna click OK. And why is this happening? There we go. So now we're looking at 90 to 140 only. Okay, it's that simple. And then we can save that as a default. Okay, I'm just gonna save it as default. I don't know why Thinkorswim keeps doing that. Okay, um, I'm gonna clear all the drawings and then I'm gonna just do it again, but down here on the oscillator where I really wanna do it. And by default, because I chose it to be the default, there it is, 90 to 140. So from zero down to uh, the lowest point on the third wave. And what I mean by that is from wave number two to number three, okay, right there. So within this range that I just boxed in, what is the lowest point? The lowest point is right here. So that's the low I wanna, um, from zero, down to that low and a pullback of 90, between 90 to 140. So we have that in X-ray. Cool. Now, please don't ask me on TradeStation. I have no clue how to do it on TradeStation, um, <laughs> but it should be pretty much the same. You just go to the settings of the drawing and you know, have it only show you 90 to 140. 0 0.9 to 1.4, okay? So here, again, same situation. I mean, it's the same chart. We have the pullback into the, the green zone. That's our okay on this trade. 
And once we have the situation where we definitely want to sell, which happened right here when price crossed below that sell line, let's get it. Now, same thing occurs here, uh, Fibonacci extension. So from the fourth wave high to the entry, which we called it kind of where we close today. And here, look, uh, I have a setup here. Seems like 90 to 140. Uh, this must be old. Yeah, 90 to 140 from a long time ago. Um, but this we don't we don't really um, we don't want the 90 to 140. We want to measure. Let's well, let's keep this one. So entry. Let's do minus one. Let's do plus one and uh, 1.6, which is the minimum we want. Uh, if we want anything further than that, 200% or two, 300% three, and uh, we'll be able to see all that. And again, this little glitch happens. There we go. So here's our, our situation. Okay. Entry 37.27, stop 40. Okay, one to one uh, on this trade in terms of reward would be 34.46. 1.6 reward versus risk is 32.76. And just like we saw in NinjaTrader, again, it's the exact same chart, just different platform. At a, you know, we're looking at 300% potential on this trade. Okay. Uh, the reason for looking at the 240 minute or the four hour chart versus the daily, if I switch over to the daily, when I take a look at the oscillator, we, we haven't traded, uh, we haven't gone into the 90 to 140 pullback. So it hasn't, in terms of the daily chart, it hasn't pulled, it hasn't retreat, price hasn't gone up enough pretty much. Whoops, uh, right there. So there's our 90 to 140. And it just hasn't it hasn't retraced enough. So the, the 240 uh, or the four hours, the one that really has the, the trade set up. That's the one that has the trade set up. Likewise, I mean, if I were to search on the five minute, we would have multiple setups. Um, it would be, it, you know, you, you, certainly it would be a completely different trade if we're looking at a smaller time frame. But, you know, this has an opportunity uh, for a pretty big trade. Mm. Funny story, I'm sure um, a lot of people have heard about this page on Reddit called Wall Street Bets, <laughs> which is, it's like the Wild West of idiots, but they have this terminology called tendies or ten baggers or pretty much thousand percent option trades. Um, you know, if I was on there <laughs> chatting about, you know, th this is one of those that has that potential. I mean, 37 to 28, that's a humongous, uh, percent move. Obviously we don't know how long this is going to take, but like I said, we don't, we don't want to just bet the house that it'll go to 300% or 28, 29 right? $28 uh, per share, 29 okay? Between those prices. So at that 1.6, take profit at that 300%, um, close to trade because at that point, I mean, something has to be horribly wrong with this company to go just much, 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 much lower.
something has to be wrong. Kind of like uh, luck and coffee. I think that was the the story of of the day. I mean, that thing. Um, what did it end up being down? Seventy five point seventy five and a half percent just today. So something would have to be wrong with X ray in in proportions to luck and coffee. Um, and you know, that's probably not the case, but, uh, but yeah, good setup for an April 17 contract. Let's, let's take a look at that. Why not? Um, so x-ray depends on how cheap those puts are, right? April, I don't think so. Uh, you're better off selling calls in April and buying puts. Uh, I don't know, you'd have to go out pretty far. These puts are pretty cheap. They're also pretty wide and uh, barely traded. Open interest is pretty darn small. Um, you know, if you think the crisis is going to be over by October or it's going to last through May, it's still pretty, pretty expensive. Um, best way to trade this would be through stock. That's your best bet. These, it's just these options are way too wide. Asking $2.50 but the bid is at at a dollar ninety five that's a sixty fifty five uh fifty five cent difference so as soon as I get into this trade i'm fifty five cents in the hole and no thank you <clears throat> no thank you trades plenty of stock two million close to three million in volume x ray so stock is definitely the the better way to go <clears throat> Stock is the way to go with this one. Um, it could be because it's after hours. I know the, uh, the, the bid and ask in the stock is, yeah, look at this, humongously wide, $39, 36 bid. Last price is 37. You know, you, ideally you, you'd want to pay 37. But uh, these options, I'm telling you, you know, the market maker is going to try to rip you off. They're going to remain wide. Funny enough, so, somebody opened up a position here using the, the May 40s. Because so you could look, the volume is 100 contracts, even the open interest is only 25. So this isn't somebody selling a position that only 25 were held going into today and a hundred traded total today. You probably see if that was um, somebody here with a hundred a lot and there it is. Somebody came in and bought a uh, hundred contracts at $5. And currently they would be in the hole pretty big, but who knows? This might be somebody just trying to convert their their options into stock, but for a much cheaper price using the puts. Right? A lot of people think, and and I, again, this this is going way off topic, um, but a lot of people think, you know, in order to be long stock, you would have to convert calls that are in the money into stock. But the same can be said about converting puts that are in the money into stock. And this would be kind of like the reverse. They're expecting price to continue to remain below 40, which is kind of where the stop loss on that trade would be. And that would be great for the short, in this case, uh, let it go lower. But once, once they decide they want to convert their, um, their options into stock, because I mean, I'm, it, it just makes no sense to me why somebody would buy a hundred lot of in the money puts 
you know, if you think price is going to go lower, you, you know what I'm saying? You, 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 you buy a little bit outside something cheaper where it could gain extrinsic value. This has already too much extrinsic, intrinsic value. Sorry. It has too much intrinsic value. So, um, doesn't tell me. So at 9.33, I would have to find out what, what price the stock was trading at that point. 37.28. So they, I mean, $3 in the money. Eh. This guy might be looking to buy some stock or might, might be looking to convert to stock. And if that's the case, this short looks even better because in order to convert that, those, uh, those puts into stock, um, they gotta, those puts have to remain under 40 by May expiration. So that gives maybe like a two month window for this trade to, to trade lower. And just based on the wave, Elliott wave, if no other factor um, outside of just what this chart looks like. And the fact that we hit the green area on the zone, 85% chance that we make a new uh, fifth wave low uh, X-ray, you know, keep it on your watch list because if this trade works, it's going to work insanely well. What's, uh, you know, in, in terms of stock, what kind of percentage are we looking at um, in terms of percentage drop? So about an eight point drop. Uh, let's do a percent, a 23% drop in stock. That's uh, that's pretty achievable. According to the Elliott Wave rules and observations. Okay. All right. So, actually, I happened to I might just post this on uh, on the Facebook page and, and and on my Twitter feed. I mean, X-ray. Oh, I hope. I really, really hope that. Uh, it opens up either at 37.44 or just a little higher because the, the longer I look at this chart, the more I want to trade this one, the more I want to short the, the living crap out of this. Um, and again, just going back to the fundamentals, this is, uh, this is what uh, some, some dental supply company diagnosis, treatment, prevention of disease, alignments, teeth. So, I mean, any relation to Invisalign or Smile Direct Club? I don't know, but uh, gums, bones, principal dental categories, consumable products, so potential toothpaste. I mean, it is. It sounds like it's one of those that that can certainly feel um, not just because the rest of the market is going down. So not just because there's some sort of black swan event that's forcing everybody to liquidate everything they have because of fear. But this one, you know, ha has something that, uh, that certainly is attractive to the short side in the environment that we're in right now, because nobody's going to the dentist. <laughs> Nobody, you know, everybody's worried about other things than you know, people are worried more about toilet paper than, than teeth hygiene. But anyways, this trade looks extremely good on the 240 minute in X-ray, follows all the rules. Um, and uh, I definitely want to see where, where this one can go. All right, guys. So that's our time here. Um, was, uh, was today's uh, session helpful? Help me out here. Just, just give me a why if you found it a little helpful. You can say no, and I'll try to improve uh, on your on your criticism. <laughs> uh, because I know we, we only talked about two stocks, um, but I hope I got the point across of the Elliott Wave uh, setup. So you got a question that I missed. Let's go up to that. How is the target line calculated estimated end of wave five? 
That's a very good question. Um, I, that I do not know the exact answer to. I do not know the exact answer. Um, I do not know the exact answer. So apologies, George. Um, I'm not sure. If you want a real answer, definitely contact support. Um, they could potentially give you the exact answer. The inexact answer, um, let's, I mean, I haven't asked that question myself. Um, let's see, I mean, does it have anything to do with the third and fourth wave? All right, let me do it the opposite way. Cause I know, yeah, I have no clue. I know, I know the oscillator, uh, uh, excuse me, the, uh, the Elia wave zone, that's calculated um, by a Fibonacci between the second and third wave. And I have it right here. And that's using the 25, 38, 50, and 61. You can see right there, I might be a little off here on my second wave. There we go. Now I'm spot on. You can see the, the 25 to 38 green, 38 to 50 yellow, 50 to 61 red. Um, but as for how that's targeted, contact support, I'm sure one of the guys or Paul himself will be more than uh willing to answer that question for you. One of the best sessions. Thank you, Rusty. Appreciate that. Looks like the mob in AG, looks like the MOB in ADET. How do you set that up on Thinkorswim? How do you set what up on Thinkorswim? Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate it. Nobody hated it. <laughs> Nobody hated my presentation today. How can I learn it? Nobody hated it. If target is going to mean something, if it's target, it's going to. Yeah, there, there, there's something about that fifth wave target. Okay, I don't think it's random. I do not think it's quite uh, random. But. Uh, Listen, guys, that's all the time we have here. What's what's the Facebook? Um, just, I mean, if you just on your phone or tablet or just your plain old computer, um, if you just, you know, if you have a Facebook, just search Trade the Fifth, uh, Trade the Fifth User Community, Trade the Fifth Users Community. Um, and uh, that is the Facebook page where all of us are kind of chatting away. Uh, Paul, I, I mean, from what I gather, he's doing all right. I haven't talked to him personally. We just kind of chat back and forth on business, but I'm sure he's doing okay. I know over there in Spain, it's a little rough right now. Previous wave four. Well, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I want, you know, be, before I pull the trigger on this one, I got to get Paul's uh, AO cake. I mean, it looks excellent to me. I just want his little fine tuned touch. You know, he, he's the man when it comes to this, but the, oh, I got this. Oh, actually, it looks fantastic. I love it. Um, okay, guys. So, I mean, thank you, Trevor. He's the one that pointed out, hey, take a look at X-Ray. X-Ray looks awesome. All right, guys. So that's all the time I have for today. Went a little over, but that's okay. I'm going to head upstairs, relax, eat a little dinner, and uh, ponder over this X-Ray trade, and uh, we'll, we'll see um, how it performs. We'll take a look at this trade again next week for sure. 
you know, win, lose, or draw. So have a good one. Uh, stay safe out there. And uh, let's, let's check in next week. Thanks, guys.